Hello and welcome back to Sunny Talk Spurs and today I'm going to be answering the question how did Brentford beat Tottenham to the signing of Antonio Nusa? But before we get into this one, another transfer saga, if you are new to the channel why don't you leave a like on the video, subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs and hit that notification bell because it will let you know when I've gone live and also in the link in the description down below you can now become a member of of Sunny Talk Spurs. It really helps me and supports the channel so I can continue to make this great Tottenham Hotspur content. And also, you exclusively get access to a members only podcast called Nice One Sunny. So, you know, get your questions down below for the latest version of the podcast, which will be out on Tuesday. Use the hashtag Nice One Sunny because then I can see which ones are questions for the podcast. But now, let's get into the Antonio Noosa news. So, the news broke yesterday that, you know, Brentford the bees have beaten Tottenham Hotspur to the signature and agreement of a deal between Club Bruges for their highly rated wonder kid Antonio Nusa. You know, I did a video a couple of months ago saying why Tottenham should have signed him. So much promise, so much potential, but he's decided to pick Brentford West London over North London. And today, you know, I'm going to talk about how I basically feel about the move and a bit more backstory into why he has picked them over us. And it's, you know, it's quite funny that he's picked them over us in the week that we are playing them. You know, we play we play Brentford on Wednesday um, at home at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So, you know, it, it's funny how football works sometimes. But yeah, but as I say, the news broke yesterday and it said Brentford have agreed a 25 million deal for Club Bruges winger Antonio Nusa, who was wanted by Tottenham. That was said by... Sky Sports News and the basics of it that I have got from reading multiple tweets and sources was it was due to game time. So at the moment Tottenham were, you know, they were negotiating for a deal. Both clubs basically agreed that, you know, Noosa was going to go back on loan to Club Bruges and finish the rest of the season because this season he wasn't guaranteed game time. But looking ahead to next season there wasn't a guarantee that Noosa would start for Tottenham. Whereas at Brentford, they could guarantee that more so. And, you know, a tweet here from Alistair Gold says, understand Antonio Noosa chose Brentford because he was guaranteed regular starts there. Spurs held talks, but for a raw but talented teenager not starting regularly for Grub Club Bruges yet, they couldn't offer such guarantees for next season with their current squad and also the player in his camp also felt that moving to one of the bigger clubs way was way too a big step in his development at this point very talented youngster though and should reach that level while it's never great to see a talented younger player go elsewhere has to be some credit going the way of his representatives of thinking about progression and development rather than leaping at the biggest move that's not always the way with young players so you can understand it because at the same time what has happened recently at Tottenham we've beaten Bayern to the signature of Radu Dragasson who looked at two offers on the table, Bayern obviously a lot of a bigger club than Tottenham, Tottenham a lot of a bigger club than um, Brentford. But these players have got to think, you know, I don't just want to go to a club and sit on a bench. You know, we've seen with some of the younger wingers at Tottenham, would he have started, you know, would he have been able to break into that front line just yet? It's hard to tell, you know, with Son there, Richarlison hitting a bit better form. Brennan Johnson, we've paid a lot of money for him and we want him to come good. And, you know, we want another forward who's going to be versatile. And maybe Antonio Nusa didn't tick all of those boxes. So there's always that. And yeah, as I say about Radu Dragerson, he didn't want to be the fourth choice centre-back at Bayern Munich and sort of fall down the pecking order. Whereas at Tottenham, there's a chance that he could break into the first team depending on situations around Romero and Mickey van der Ven injuries and stuff like that. So you can understand that. And also, the key thing about Brentford as well is they do have that sort of uh, Scandinavian, Norwegian vibe about them at the moment. Obviously, linked heavily, um, co-owned... I think their own app has some sort of agreement with FC Michelin. I think they own them or something like that. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that is true. Um, and then also, you know, they've got a lot of Norwegian players in the squad, like Norgard and uh, Christoph Ayer. So, you know, you can understand, like, there's probably, it could have been an easier sell for them. Whereas, you know, you probably look at Tottenham. I think they only held, like, one meeting or so with him. Um, so he wasn't a priority signing. So it looks like he... 
he we we were beaten to his signature by Brentford. But by the looks of it, you know we've we've highlighted key areas by going for you know Timo Werner for the time being prioritising the winger or striker in the summer. We're also looking at midfield as Conor Gallagher keeps being touted, but a defender was also a priority more as well. So part of me is like, you know, it would have been an ideal signing. You know, a lot of the players we've been linked to, like we were linked to Santiago Jimenez a couple of months back, but it's sort of you, you stay in a situation where, you know, Tottenham always is assessing, you know, Johan Lang, Scott Mann, Fabio Paratici and what players can sort of tick boxes um, and stuff like that. And maybe Antonio Nusa didn't tick all those boxes and other deals would be better. You know, 25 million, throwing that down on a player is, you know, for an 18-year-old, might seem cheap in the modern market, but he could go to Brentford and maybe get some more experience and then maybe a move to Tottenham in the future happens. You know, you you can't judge these things as of yet. And also, the way you have to see it, which is quite interesting, and I mentioned his name, we have invested a lot of money in Brennan Johnson, who Brentford did want. And Brentford could have, you know, I think they were bidding at £30 million for him at one stage as well. And then we went in with a £47 million bid or so. So it's interesting how we're going for a similar, you know, with our stat-based signings um, like Brentford and Brighton do, it's interesting to see. So maybe, like, we've found a hidden gem somewhere for a cheaper price, you know. It, it, we, we just don't know what the player's going to be like. But good luck to him, I think. Brentford is a good move. I mean, you look at them this season, you know, now they've got Ivan Tony back. It's a bit better, but there was a lot of pressure on Visser. There was a lot of pressure on on Embuemo. So they could do with replacing some of that firepower along with Tony. And if they lose Tony, then they've got, you know, Noosa in as well. So, yeah, quite interesting. But I don't think you can be too upset about this transfer, really. Um, I think, you know, we have to look at different areas. We have to look at different, you know, after watching the Manchester City game as well, we do look a bit blunt sometimes up front without Sun. Um, you know, if Richarlison's not firing on all cylinders, if there's not much creativity going forward, you know, only one shot on target, uh, one shot in general in the whole match. So maybe we're looking at a bigger name or a more versatile forward for the for the future in the sense of like in the summertime. Um, but yeah, I think at the moment, nothing too much to panic about, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. I don't think, you know, Spurs fans seem a little bit disheartened and annoyed. But he didn't know who the player was probably a couple of months ago until his name was linked with us. So, yeah, I think all's calm. Don't need to worry. We've already done some good January business. Keep the faith, Tottenham uh, fans. Because at the end of the day, Andrew Postacoglu has that pull and he'll find a simple player to fit his mould. Don't worry about that. So let me know in the comments down below. Are you annoyed over this transfer? Were you really buzzing to see Noosa playing in Lily White? Or are you just like me? You know, you've got to move on. Roll with the punches and see who we can pick up in the summer. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. And as I said at the beginning, if you are new around here one and you leave a like on the video, subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs. It's free. You know, just hit that button. You can always see my videos. Because if you also hit that notification bell... It will let you know when I've gone live. So that is absolutely fantastic. And in the link in the description, you become a member of Sunny Talk Spurs. It supports me for a small monthly fee to keep me making this content weekly. And also with that, you get access to the Nice One Sunny podcast, which goes out weekly. New episode live this week. So get your questions in for that as well with the hashtag nice one sunny. And I'll see you guys pretty soon. My next proper video will probably be a reaction to the Brentford game on Wednesday as well. If you miss the podcast. But you know, you want to go and see the podcast. It's a good little thing we have going on on the channel right now. But I'll see you then. And come on you Spurs. Ciao.